Nostalgia is powerful. We know this. The inability to quickly access games or objects or movies or memories or whatever that give us this feeling makes it even more powerful when we actually manage to do so. Maybe this is why, after 10 hours of trying and failing, it was so satisfying when I finally managed to install a Mac OS 9 emulator on my PC, which is why I thought I'd break it down in this nifty video so that you can play Myst on Mac OS 9 in true 90s fashion. So what is an emulator anyways? Emulators create artificial hardware environments on your computer that makes the software think it's running on its original hardware. Like imagine for instance, your body has a worm living inside it and the Amazon delivery person comes and the worm's like, hey, it's me, I'll sign for this package, thanks. Uh, oh, someone here. Oh. Hi, delivery, could someone sign for this package? Oh yeah, hi, it's uh, me, that's for me, I'll sign. Thanks. In our case, we'll be installing Sheep Shaver, which will create an artificial Mac hardware environment on our PC, which we will then install a Mac operating system onto. I got a lot of information for this video from immaculation.com and from Alex Electronics video on the topic, which I will link below. Alex does a really good job of explaining it all, but it was made six years ago now and the process has changed a little bit. So I thought I'd make an updated one with a little more information and add to the tiny pool of videos on this topic. I've broken this process into four sections. First, we'll download all the files we'll need. Next, we'll get the Sheep Shaver program all set up. Then we'll go over the Mac OS 9 installation. And finally, I'll show you how to get some games and programs running on the emulator. We'll be making three downloads. One will be the Sheep Shaver program, which will come in a folder full of libraries needed for it to work properly, as well as the Sheep Shaver GUI, or Graphical User Interface, which will let you change Sheep Shaver preferences and set everything up. Next, you'll need a ROM file. A ROM stands for read-only memory. It's a non-volatile type of memory, which means it doesn't need a constant current of electricity to retain the memory. The data is usually permanent and normally cannot be written onto. Among other things, ROM holds the information that a computer needs to start up. We need a ROM file for our little emulation soup so our emulated computer can start up and run. The last thing we'll need is the Mac OS 9 operating system. If you have an old install disk kicking around, you can use it and feel all that golden nostalgia rush through your veins as you pop the disk into the disk drive. If you don't have a disk, you can find disk images online to use instead. A disk image is a file that contains everything a physical disk would. You can find the Sheep Shaver download on this quaint forum at the Immaculation site. The product presentation here isn't very fancy, um, and if that freaks you out a little bit, I encourage you to just do some research yourself and make sure you feel comfortable downloading all this before you do so. I myself love the rush of adrenaline I get when I download unknown links. Next, you'll want to harvest the ROM file from Redundant Robot. If you search for Redundant Robot, you're bound to find it. This page had two options for ROM files, an old world ROM and a shiny new world ROM. The new world ROM is recommended for Mac OS 9, but for whatever reason didn't work for me. So I will be excluded from that utopia and be using the old world ROM for this tutorial. If you don't have a very real, physical, real disk like I did, then you can find an image files for the operating system online. This one seems reliable, but I wouldn't know because I used a real disk. Once I was finished downloading all these files, I extracted them if I needed to, and then moved them all into the same folder on the desktop. You should also throw the disk image file into there if you went this route and didn't have a disk like I did. An important step of this process that you do not want to miss is renaming the ROM file to Mac OS ROM, exactly, like you see here, with no extension. It'll say, are you sure you want to do this, blah blah blah, yes, it's fine, stop standing between me and my dreams of nostalgic glory. After renaming the ROM file, I move it into the Sheep Shaver folder with all the other libraries and files. Here I had to extract my image file before moving it into the same Sheep Shaver folder. Then I located the disk image file and copied and pasted it into the Sheep Shaver folder. 
So at the end of this crazy download bonanza, you basically want to have the Sheep Shaver folder with all the libraries, the GUI, and the program in it on your desktop with the ROM file and the disk image file in that folder as well. So you want it all in the same place. If you try opening the Sheep Shaver program before putting the ROM file in this folder, or if your ROM file doesn't work for whatever reason, you'll get this message. If there's something wrong with your disk image file, or if you haven't set up the preferences in the GUI properly, you'll probably get this flashing floppy disk. And now it's time to go into the GUI so we can get everything set up and running smoothly. First, you're gonna wanna press run anyways, um, and then this beautiful window will pop up. So we're gonna go through each tab and get everything set up. On this first page, if you want to be able to use disk drives in the Mac OS, you'll have to select a disk drive for it to pull from. So on mine, it's the E drive. Then you'll want to enable my computer icon on your Mac desktop. This will allow you to access all the files on your PC through the Mac operating system. Next, we'll click Create to make our storage volume. It should automatically show the location of your Sheep Shaver folder, which is where you want to put this volume. The size should be 500 megabytes or higher. I set mine to 1000. You can name it anything you want. I named mine Mac OS 9 and added the extension .hfv. HFV files are very specific files that are used primarily with simulated Mac volumes on PC hard drives just like ours. Then press create. Now it's time to mount the operating system install disk image. Press add and find the disk image file under the files browser on the right side. If you didn't put your disk image file into your sheep shaver folder, you'll have to navigate through the folders on the left side to find it. Now press OK and we're going to move over to the graphics tab. Under graphics slash sound, you can choose your preferred window settings. If you choose window instead of full screen, it'll be easier to exit and multitask. You'll want to set the window refresh rate to dynamic. Then go over to the memory tab and we're going to change the RAM size to 512. And you'll want to make sure that ignore illegal memory accesses is checked. Now we can open Cheap Shaver! Press start at the bottom left of the GUI window. When you open it for the first time, if you're using a disk image file, you'll probably get this error message. In order to progress beyond this screen, you'll have to close out of Sheep Shaver using the task manager, then locate your disk image file, right click and open properties at the bottom of the menu, and check read only. The original disk would have been read only, so if this doesn't match up, it won't let you install it. Now it's time for the exciting part, installing the operating system. The first thing that will come up is this little window asking if you want to initialize the hard drive. You can name it whatever you want and make sure the format is Mac OS standard. Now click initialize and continue. We'll open the Mac OS 9 install program here and it'll start taking you through the setup. First, you'll pick the destination disk, then it'll take you through the regular install stuff, like agreeing to the software license agreement and these kinds of things. You can customize your installation or just go with the recommended settings. Then we'll press start and it will install. Once it's finished, you'll want to click quit and restart the computer. Not your actual computer, just the fake emulator computer. You can find shutdown and restart options under special. After this, you'll be in Mac OS 9. After I reset the program, it loaded for a while and then showed this screen full of beautiful blue faces and a wristwatch. So I left it to load, but when I came back a few hours later, it was still stuck on this screen. I just closed the program with Task Manager and reopened it, after which it started up normally. Mine actually took a long time to load a lot of these screens, but I cut it out so it wouldn't be so boring. It then kindly took me through the setup with the Mac OS Setup Assistant. I ran into another slight hiccup here with the emulator freezing when I got to the time and date setup. Again, I ended the program using Task Manager, and when I booted it up, again, it didn't take me through the setup, but just showed me the normal desktop. After the time and date setup, is just the location, network, and name and password settings, which aren't really that important. So don't worry if your process freezes in the middle of this. And now once it's restarted again, we've done it. We're here in Mac OS 9 in all its glory. 
Naturally, I had to spend some time exploring different system sounds and customize the desktop appearance, which I will now give you a little taste of. I am a frog in my throat! No! I mean a real frog! The light you see at the end of the tunnel is the headlamp of a fast approaching train. My favorite food is pizza. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? When I grow up, I'm going to be a scientist. So now that we have the operating system up and running, you'll probably want to run some shiny old games and applications. This is really simple to do and I'll show you how right now. Like the operating system install program, you can find disk image files for games and programs online. Poke around on the web long enough and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Keep in mind that these files will often be in SIT, ISO, or TOAST format. I'm going to cover the installation of these file types. The first thing to note is that if any of your downloads are in a zip folder, you'll have to extract them on your real life computer before opening them in the emulator. One cool thing about this emulator is that it lets you access all the files on your real computer through the Mac operating system. If you navigate to this PC on the desktop, you can do exactly that. From here, I'll head into my computer and to my downloads folder to find my games. Finder has everything nicely disorganized here for me. First, I'll show you how to install .sit files. This stands for stuff it, and this file type is just a compressed archive file. Our Mac has a stuff it expander that can handle these files with ease. Double click on the sit file to open it. Yeah. And when this error message pops up, you'll have to press OK and choose a folder or make a new one for the file to be expanded into. Then click select whatever your folder name is at the bottom and the unstuffer will start unstuffing. Now you can navigate to the folder you just selected or created to open all the stuff. I'm moving my folder to my desktop for quick access. When you open it up, everything should be running smoothly depending on how reliable your file is. Here I've downloaded my beautiful, precious, disgusting human baby to keep me company. Please, someone help my baby. I followed the same steps for this knockoff Tamagotchi software that I stumbled upon. Unfortunately for me, it was made by this crafty Mac shareware programmer from Switzerland. I looked up all his sites with no luck, so it looks like I'll be sending some snail mail so I can feed and play with a living chick and not just mourn him at this simulated funeral. May he rest safely in my arms. There's an added step if the file you're trying to install is an ISO or toast file. You may have to unstuff it like I had to do here, following the same steps as earlier. But if you try to run the unstuffed file, you'll get this error message. In order to run this, you'll have to navigate over to the Mac OS 9 disk here, Open it and click into a folder called Utilities. Inside this folder, you'll find an application called Disk Copy. You'll use this to mount your disk image. Locate your disk image file in the finder and drag it onto the Disk Copy window. It'll mount that disk image right up for you and an icon should pop up onto your desktop. And now you should be all set to go with any game you could ever possibly play. Someone help my baby. Before we wrap things up, I want to quickly mention that I got the internet to work in the emulator, but it's really limiting since a lot of today's websites are incompatible with the web browser. So because of this, I won't delve into it in this video. However, if you follow the link in my description to the blog post for this tutorial, I'll have it outlined there. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below, and if you happen to find any weird video games during your Sheep Shaver adventures, leave those in the comments too. Bye!